We are going to talk about reincarnation in the Bible. Now, Christianity today does not accept reincarnation because their concept of heaven and hell would not make sense in the presence of reincarnation. Reincarnation is real. In fact, it's hidden in the Bible. It's, it's coded. You must be very much awake to be able to find it out. But because it makes nonsense of heaven and hell, nobody wants to admit it in Christianity. Because if you admit reincarnation, the first question we will ask is that, okay, now me, for example, I've been here many times. Let's say even if I've been here just three times, which of these my three lives will the Christian God stand on, consider, and process me for whether heaven or hell? Hello everyone, you are welcome on the African Spiritual Connections TV. Do you know what we are doing nowadays? We began a series about stolen legacy African spirituality in the Bible. Our claim is that this book is the book of the African ancestor, stolen by the thieves, rebranded and sent back to the descendants of the ancestor, used gravely to brainwash them to even go to the extent of tarnishing their own selves, hating whatever they have, and chasing after that of foreigners, which are, in fact, of even inferior quality. So today, I am here to touch on yet another topic, which is very, very broad. Yet, I'll try my best to make it simple. We are going to talk about reincarnation in the Bible. Now, Christianity today does not accept reincarnation because their concept of heaven and hell would not make sense in the presence of reincarnation. For example, after I got to know myself, I realized that in ancient times, I incarnated many times. I'm not willing to put the number out. And in modern West Africa, I've also incarnated many times. I know how many times I've reincarnated in this world, which is not once, twice, thrice, in fact, more, right? You can also find out yours. If you want to find out how many times you have incarnated and reincarnated, take my number up on the screen and contact me and let's talk, all right? Well, finding out comes at the fee of a peanut, so don't worry. Let me go on to my topic. Now, reincarnation is real. In fact, it's hidden in the Bible. It's, it's coded. You must be very much awake to be able to find it out. But because it makes nonsense of heaven and hell, nobody wants to admit it in Christianity. Because if you admit reincarnation, the first question we will ask is that, okay, now me, for example, I've been here many times. Let's say even if I've been here just three times, which of these my three lives will the Christian God stand on, consider, and process me for whether heaven or hell. Let's say my first two lives, I was a very bad person. And the third life, I'm very, very good. I've done so well. Uh, I give Anna to whom Anna is due. I pay my dues, I pay my tithes, as the Christians ask for. And I do good to my neighbor. I love people as I love myself. So will the Christian God cast away my two lives, which I was a very bad person, and consider only my third life, which I'm a very good person, and possess me for heaven? What if my first life, I was very bad? My second life, I did, my first and second life, I was marvelous. I did so well. I was very good. And my third life, which I, have, I haven't been made aware of my previous lives and I've done so much bad, will I be possessed for hell? Will my two lives that I, I, I did so well not count? These are questions that will make nonsense of judgment day and heaven and hell theory. So Christianity does not want to admit 
the existence of reincarnation. But reincarnation, it's here. It's, it's very, very here. Now, before we go to other areas of it, let me first point you out to something. Let me first point out, point, point out to you. The English is not my mother tongue. <laughs> Forget about it. Let me first point out to you question that the disciples of Jesus the Christ asked their master, Jesus, and how he also answered it. And we will think critically around it and fish out the suggestion of reincarnation in that question. Now let's go to John chapter number one. No, John chapter number nine, verse one to two. John chapter number one. Chapter number nine, verse one to two. As Jesus was walking along, he saw a man who had been born, born blind. His disciples asked him, Teacher, whose sin caused him to be born blind? Was it his? Was it his own or his parents? Maybe you didn't hear that. Let me read it again. As Jesus was walking along, he saw a man who had been born blind. His disciples asked him, Teacher, whose sin caused him to be born blind? Was it his own or his parents' sin? Jesus answered, His blindness has nothing to do with his sins or his parents' sins. Now, did you hear that or, or you didn't fish out the point? Hmm. Let's think about this critically. What did the disciples ask Jesus? Teacher, whose sins caused him to be blind? Was it his own or his parents' sin? Jesus also answered, it was not his own sin or his parents' sin. Didn't the Bible say this man was born blind? Or you didn't see that one? Read verse 1. As Jesus was walking along, he saw a man who had been born blind. The man was born blind. Yet the disciples are asking Jesus, whose sin caused him to be blind? Was it his own sin? Someone who was born blind, how did he sin for his sin to cause him to be blind? Are you thinking? Are you thinking? Are you thinking? How did someone who was born blind how did his own sin cause him to be blind? And Jesus also answered, Jesus knowing so well, per what they say about him, he was a man of wisdom, he knew. He said, it was not his own sin, neither was it his parents. <laughs> so a man's sin could cause him to be born blind, right? Okay. Now, when you are not yet born, how can you sin? For your sins to cause you to be born blind. Mm -hmm. It's kicking. I'm sure you are thinking now. Reincarnation. Whatever you do in this life today, if you don't receive your punishment in this life now, you will die, go and come and serve it. There's nothing like forgiveness of sin. There is nothing like forgiveness of sin. When you bring forgiveness in chi, forgive. We call it gift me, facture me, gift me. If I gift you something, <laughs> how do you say that thing is no more? I've given you that thing. I have forgiven you. So you carry it all your life. We don't forgive. We, we, we don't cast your sins away. Or your wrongdoings, they follow you forever. Until you have served your punishment enough. So John chapter 9 verse 1 to 2 has given you some kickstart. Now let's go into details here. I'll center this whole conversation on a man in the Bible called Elijah. And a man in the Bible called John. There are a series of quotations in the Bible. That when you align them. It shows you that John was a reincarnate. Of the man called Elijah. You say it's a lie. 
Well, let the Bible talk, not me. Let me first take you to first, no, Second Kings, chapter two, verse eleven. Second Kings, chapter two, verse eleven. They kept talking as they walked. Then suddenly, a chariot of fire, pulled by horses of fire, came between them, and Elijah was taken up to heaven by a whirlwind. So, this is the quotation saying that Elijah was taken up to heaven. Years, several hundreds and thousands of years ago, before the coming of Jesus Christ. Right? So, John, no, Elijah had been taken up to heaven. <laughs> now, that didn't end it. Let me take you back to Malachi, where there is a promise or a prophecy that Elijah will be sent back into this world. Elijah will be sent back into this world. Let me take you to Malachi chapter 4, verse number 5. Before the great and terrible day of the Lord comes, I will send you the prophet Elijah. What is Elijah coming to do? He will bring fathers and children together again. Otherwise, I would have to come and destroy your country. Other versions will say the world. Right? So, the Christian God is saying that he is going to send Elijah back into the world. Now, what is the means of one coming into this world? There is one main mean to come into this world through the vagina of a woman. The womb. Unless you are born by a woman, you will not be able to have body and come into this world. Yes. Unless you are born. People say Elijah was not born. Elijah just appeared. It's only because the Bible is not concrete enough. All the facts are not recorded. So it's only the upper life of Elijah that. When I say upper life, I mean the latter life of Elijah that got recorded in this our sister says book Bible. Alright? So unless you are born by a woman, so even your master Jesus, when he was coming, he passed through Mary before he came here. With all the power that you say he has, why didn't he just appear in our universe? Mm -hmm. So you know, the woman is the gateway to our universe. Now, let's go to Luke chapter 1 verse 13 is a prophecy is a fulfillment of the prophecy in Malachi verse chapter 4 verse 5 Luke 1 verse 13 No let me take you to verse Luke 1 verse 17 He will go ahead of the Lord strong and mighty like the prophet Elijah He will Bring fathers and children together again. He will turn disobedient people back to the way of thinking of the righteous. He will get the lost people ready for him. There is a prophecy where the angel Gabriel, later I'll come and teach about Gabriel, who he is. Uh, in the Bible, according to the Bible, Gabriel is a black spirit. <laughs> it's a spirit. When he is being described, he described as a black deity. So, Gabriel is talking to Zachariah, the father of John, and giving him prophecy of childbirth through his wife, Elizabeth. And Gabriel is telling Elizabeth that, uh, Gabriel is telling Zachariah that Elizabeth is going to give birth to a boy. And this boy is coming with the spirit of Elijah. In fact, if you read the New Living Translation, Luke 1 verse 17 says, He will be a man with the spirit and power of Elijah. He will prepare people for the coming of the Lord. He will turn the hearts of the fathers to the cho their children. And he will cause those who are rebellious to accept the wisdom of the godly. That's what New Living Translation says. So if you read Malachi 4 verse 5, it said it that Elijah will come back into this world and he is coming to bring Children and their fathers together. Now, Luke 1, 13 is also telling you that the man John is coming with the spirit and power of Elijah. 
And what is he coming to do? He is also coming to bring the heart of fathers and children together. <laughs> All right? Now, people are still in doubt. So let me take you to Matthew. When Jesus himself confirmed that, yes, John was Elijah. Matthew chapter 17, verse number 10 to 13. Matthew chapter 17, verse number 10. Then the disciples asked Jesus, Why do the teachers of the law say that Elijah has to come first? Elijah is indeed coming first, answered Jesus, and he will get everything ready. But I tell you that Elijah has already come, and people did not recognize him, but treated him just as the way they pleased. In the same way, they will also ill treat the Son of Man. Verse 13. Then the disciples understood that he was talking about he was talking to them about John the Baptist. So Jesus is here confirming that John the Baptist was indeed Elijah who has been reincarnated. So who is that Christian pastor saying that reincarnation is a false fallacy and a false concept? Well, that pastor does not really know the book that he or she is carrying. Yes, the concept of reincarnation is real. Now, maybe we don't believe what John is saying, uh, what Luke said, said. We don't believe what Jesus is saying. We don't believe what Malachi is saying. Let's go into the Bible and compare the life of Elijah and the life of John and see if there is any semblance. All right? Now, let me take you to the appearance of Elijah in 2 Second King, um, Second Kings chapter 1, verse 7 to 8. 2 Kings chapter 1 verse 7 What did the man look like? The king asked. He was wearing a cloak made of animal skin tied with a leather belt. They answered. So this is a king who sent his men to go and look out for something. They found Elijah. Uh, that's King Ahaziah. And uh, the king was asking his men to describe the man that they found and see if he could uh, uh, decipher if he's Elijah. And when they described the man, he said, He was wearing a cloak made of animal skins, tied with a leather belt. They answered, It is Elijah, the king exclaimed. So Elijah was wearing a cloak made of animal skin, right? Animal skin and leather belt. Now, Let's go to Matthew chapter 3, verse 4, and see what John was also wearing. Matthew chapter 3, verse number 4. John's clothes were made of camel's hair. He wore a leather belt around his waist. Hmm. So Elijah was wearing animal skin. John was wearing camel hair. Camel is an animal, right? So animal skin. And Elijah wore a leather belt. John wore a leather belt on his waist. That's appearance. Now, if you read through uh, the first and second kings and you observe the work of Elijah, you realize that Elijah, all that he did was to bring his people back to um, serving the God of their ancestors and living the deities of other people All right okay but if we also go to look 113 you will see the ordained destiny of john the baptist was to also bring the hearts of fathers and children together to serve the god of their ancestors and leave alone the god of other nations so these two icons had the same destiny. Now, when you are incarnated, the destiny that you come and live, when you, you die, as in, I mean, you leave your body here, and the spirit goes back to where it came from, and it is returning, I mean, it is be, being reincarnated, 
it comes with the same destiny that you had before because it is coming to continue the work that it did not finish all right i'm using it because we have males and we have females i don't want to be biased towards any of the gender therefore it suits better i've already talked about look right look 116 that's where you find the destiny of john the baptist all right now you also see that in the bible both elijah and john had a common destiny in the sense that they hated misrule of kings yes elijah hated the misrule of Ken, Ahaziah, or Ahaziah, and John the Baptist also hated the misrule of Herod. Now let's go to the Bible. Let's go to First Kings chapter eighteen, verse eighteen. No, the king that uh, Elijah hated his rule was Ahab, not Ahaziah. Ha Ahab. So First Kings chapter eighteen, verse eighteen. I am not a troublemaker. Elijah answered, You are. You and your father, you are disobeying the Lord's commands and worshipping the idols of Baal. Now order all the people of Israel to meet me at Malkamel. Bring along the 450 prophets of Baal and the 400 prophets of the goddess Asherah, who are supported by Queen Jezebel. So you can see Elijah challenging the son, which is uh, the prince of King Ahab telling him that he and his father are the troublemakers of Israel right now let's go to Matthew chapter 14 verse 3 and see the fate of John Matthew chapter 14 verse 3 for her for Herod had earlier ordered John's arrest and he had him chained and put in prison he had done this because of Herodias his brother Philip's wife. For some time, John the Baptist had told Herod, it is not right for you to be married to Herodias. Herod wanted to kill him, but he was afraid of the Jewish people because they considered John to be a prophet. So here is John the Baptist also <laughs> causing trouble for King Herod to the extent that John wanted to be killed by Herod. So Ahab also had the same problem from Elijah. The same person reincarnated, having the same destiny. Now let's see how these people will end. Uh, let's see Elijah. Elijah was being chased by Jezebel all the time. And when he came back in, the life, in this life again, still he was being chased by another queen. Jezebel was the queen of King Ahab. Now let's go to 1 Kings chapter 19 verse 2. 1 Kings chapter 19 verse 2. She, let me start from verse 1. Can Ahab told his wife Jezebel everything that Elijah had done and how he had put all the prophets of Baal to death. She sent a message to Elijah. May the God strike me dead if by this time to if by this time tomorrow I don't do the same thing to you that you did to the prophet. Elijah was afraid and fled for his life. He took his servant and went to Beersheba in Judah. So here is Elijah being chased by Jezebel for his life. Now let me take you to Matthew chapter 14 verse 8. To 11 and let's see what also happened to John let me start from verse 6 on Herod's birthday the daughter of Herodias danced in front of the whole group Herod was so pleased that he promised her I swear that I will give you anything that you ask for at her mother's suggestion she asked him give me here and now the head of John the Baptist on a dish the king was sad but because of the promise he had made in front of all his guests he gave orders that her wish be granted so he had john beheaded in prison 
the head was brought in on a dish and given to the girl who took it to her mother. So Herodias also caused John the Baptist's death just as Jezebel was chasing after Elijah to kill him. In fact, if Elijah had not been taken away, he would have been killed by Jezebel because Jezebel hated him so much that he plotted, he had plans underway to take Elijah's life. So reincarnation is really clear in the Bible. Malachi has said it, that Elijah, who was taken away, would come back. John, I mean Luke 1, 17 said it, that John the Baptist was coming into this world with the spirit and power of Elijah. Now Jesus confirmed it in Matthew chapter 17, reading from verse 1 to 13, would tell you that Jesus confirmed that Elijah was John the Baptist. That was killed. If you want to find this one, read from verse 10 to 13. And we have compared the life of John the Baptist and the life of Elijah from the Bible. And we have seen that there is similarities. There is even one thing that you can also see. That John the Baptist was living in the wilderness. He was living on the savannah, eating locust. And Elijah also lived in the wilderness, being fed by a raven. So when you are reincarnated, you come to continue whatever you left behind. But today, what do we see? There are many people in this life who don't know their destiny anymore. Whatever they left behind in their previous life, because they have been told that reincarnation is never there, when they come, they don't go and seek out. They don't talk to mediums. They don't talk to prophets. I mean, seers. They don't use Urim anymore to find out who they are and know their destinies and continue from where they ended. Therefore, people are living wasted lives. People are rich and they think that's all. It's not about the money you have. It's about what you are meant to be doing here. Is that what you are following? Now, if you want to find out about whether you are a reincarnated soul or you are not a reincarnated soul, whether this is your first time, this is your second time, this is your third time, I recommend to you Afa Initiation. When you are initiated into Afa, the spiritual name that will come will be able to tell whether you are a reincarnated soul or you, this is your first time. You also get to know the spirits that are in your life and you will know how to save them if you want to, which I will suggest you do. Aside a fine initiation, which is the most concrete, right? You can also be doing divinations. Divinations is just a peep into situations and solution to problems. But initiation will give you the generality of your whole life your past, your, pre, uh, your current, and your future, right? We also have the Amageshi, who can also invoke deities. So if you are having issues with your family deity, you can talk to me, and I will lead you to an Amageshi for your family deity to be invoked, and questions to be asked, for solutions to be prescribed. If you also want to know yourself, and you don't have the means to go to a fire initiation, you can also talk to me. I will lead you to an Amagashi where your soul will be invoked, questions will be asked, and you will find out about yourself. But I recommend a fa, in, a fa initiation to those who have the money because it comes along as a package. It gives you cleansing. It gives you protection. It gives you, it opens the way for your business to thrive. And also tells you about the work you are supposed to do in this world. It tells you about your deities, in fact, anything that you want to know, a fire initiation can give you that. As you can see, I got initiated some months ago, about seven, eight months ago. I've really seen the benefit. It's good and I recommend it. All right. So let me bring an end to this episode. I'll come your way another time. There are several topics that I would want us to be discussing. We'll talk about some um, topics around unclean animals and food. We will talk about Afa, divination and initiation in the Bible. We will also talk about who the Hebrew God is. The Tetragrammaton. We will talk about the Tetragrammaton. And we will also use the Bible to prove that Jesus is not God. Now, we will also talk about the Holy Spirit. And substantiate the fact that everybody has it. So let no pastor deceive you that 
you need the Holy Spirit to be, to be able to uh, interpret the Bible. In fact, everybody is born with the Holy Spirit. We will come and show it. We will also talk about um, Daniel and the gods Daniel served. And our, 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 our claim will be that Daniel served African deities. And we will use the Bible to show it. Now, we will also talk about the Bible being black history. Being black history. Book of black ancestry and history. We will also talk about purification with herbs. And we also talk about circumcision and a lot more. So, subscribe to my channel and keep your fingers crossed. There are so many goodies that I'll be bringing on. I've done a research already. I just have to find time and come live on your screens. Bye-bye.